going to be doing our 42 day dry aged beef. Um, we've long dry aged beef, typical locker beef, what we would consider locker beef is what we do where we have our holding coolers in the back. They've got a low flow um, evaporators with the fans running. So we get pretty good climate control, um, about 35 degrees and 80 to 85 percent humidity is optimal but when we slaughter and we put new carcasses in there that can change the humidity um, and you can uh, struggle with mold growth and that that type of stuff so to really get like a 42 dry age we're using our dry ager cabinets which the unique things about these they have a uv um, light and they have the salt, so they're able to hold at um, 34.5 to 35.5 degrees, about 80% humidity, very consistent, and they recycle and sanitize the air every 60 seconds. So you have a perfect climate for dry aging. And dry aging is a practice that's been around for centuries. Before refrigeration, we had to dry age. What happens is, you get some moisture evaporates out of the, the meat, um, so you get a more robust flavor, and then you get enzymatic breakdown, so those proteins start to break down and becomes more tender. And the flavors that you get are kind of nutty, kind of a caramel flavor. So we're gonna show you what it looks like when we cut that crust off, get into that nice, tender, well-marbled beef. But it's at the end of its 42-day dry aging cycle, we're gonna get it out, we're gonna cut it, and we're gonna try some of it at the end of it. See what it tastes like after 42 days, perfect dry aging. 42 day dry age, cut and cook. You ready to crack the seal, Scott? I am. This is the first time this has been opened since we put these in here. That's a 42 day Wagyu Tajima bourbon mash fed. Gorgeous. There's a grain-fed beef strip loin, all nice and aged. We're just gonna get these out. We're gonna get them out on the processing floor and uh, start cutting them. Here, I'll hand you that one. All right, here, this will be like firewood. Can you handle another one? Give me one? another one right there. Don't mess up my tags. Okay. All right, I'll be behind you with all more. Right. Okay. So we'll just go down through each of these chunks. I can take these prices out, but I gotta leave them. Okay. You leave the tag identifying. Because we have the Tajima and just regular grain fed mixed in here. Started. First thing I want to do is I want to show you this new Kydex sheath that we have for our six inch Victorinox. These are fantastic. It's a great way. They have a, to just handle them. You can take them with you camping, uh, hunting, whatever, or you just use around the shop. You know, you can toss them around. You're not going to damage your blade and they have a clip for your belt. So let's just get started. I'm going to start with this beef strip loin grain fed beef strip loin. And the first thing I have to do, so when we save these, we put them into the dry ager, we leave a lot of bone and fat on these um, to help protect that meat. So picture this as a, a piece of cheese that you're aging and that outer crust of that cheese, you cut that off and what you want on the inside. So this is the same thing. Um, first step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my bandsaw and I'm gonna trim this down how I normally would prior to cutting steaks. Uh, so yeah, let's just get it fired up and we'll start there. So what that's going to do is expose that beautiful, nice cherry red meat underneath those bones. So now we'll just get started 
removing the rest of the bones like we normally would on processing day. So we're just going to go down through here, remove all these bones, and you'll see how gorgeous this meat looks underneath. So there is the, re the reason for the, the higher price per pound and cost on these is there is some, some loss. So some of this stuff we won't want to grind into ground beef. Um, and there, there is going to be some parts that get discarded just because they're so dried out. So, and the yield loss as well. So that's why there's, it's reflected in the price. Once we get that done, and everything's just a, a little bit harder to cut now that it's dried out more. The fat's a lot harder and just a little bit more difficult to break down. So the biggest thing is just going down through and trimming all of that exterior off of there. Get the little bones out. Boy, I can smell that that nutty flavor that Scott was talking about. That that nutty aroma. I can I can smell it as I'm working on it here. All right. So there we've prepped all of the bones and exterior off the strip loin. Now what we want to do is just go down through here and start cutting some, some steaks. So I'm going to start by just removing a little bit of this fat off the back of these. So just get some of those high edges off there. And then once we do that, that dryer did such a nice job. I mean, there's going to be very minimal loss, really. So I'm going to start by just taking this end off. You can see some of that discoloration there. This part, we'll, we'll discard that. And then we're just going to square this up for our first steak. That'll go into some ground beef. And then we can just start going down through and cutting some steaks. So this is a beautifully 42 day dry aged strip steak ready for the grill Boy, don't those just look gorgeous and once we get all these sections cut we're going to pick something to throw in the grill we're going to try some of these. So a nice inch to an inch and a quarter. Those are going to be tasty. So there you have the strip steaks. And we'll just get these all lined up and then we'll start on the next section. So you saw the strip section. Next one is the T-bone section. This one I'm going to be doing a little bit more saw work and a little bit less knife work because um, obviously this is going to be bone in. So we start by just squaring it up a little bit.
take a little bit of the fat off of there. So now we'll just go down through with our bone scraper that we have these all cut. We're just gonna get a little bit of that bone dust off of there. That's a beef, 42 day aged T-bone steak. We got the T-bones cut, which you can see right here. Now, on to the porterhouse section. Same process here with just getting these all scraped up. Can you smell that, Spencer? I can smell it. It's amazing. It smells so good. I just imagine this sizzling on the grill. What seasoning we're going to put on there is a question. Oh boy. Maybe we do some without seasoning and some with. I uh, just have a little pile you can dip it in. Little, just a little pile. We certainly don't want to over mask the, that dry aged flavor, but yeah. On to the next chunk. So just to bring you up to speed, we did the grain fed beef strip, the grain fed beef T-bones. We did the grain fed beef porterhouse. Now we have the Tajima porterhouse steaks. This is the bourbon mash fed. Look at those beauties. Wow. All right, let's start scraping some of these so you can see that marbling. Wow. I don't know about you, but I think I'm most excited Man. about these. Man. I was gonna ask Scott which ones he thought we should cook but I think we should not ask Scott Spencer and I think you and I should come to agreement that we're going to we're going to do we're going to cook one of these absolutely wow we'll just go cook without him maybe give him just a little piece of bone at the end <laughs> look at that that's incredible 42 day dry aged american tajima Wagyu. Look at that huge, huge piece of intermuscular fat. Look at that. There. It's like the Mississippi River running through that steak. Okay, get those added to our stash. Now it's time to go over here. We're going to break down this chuck. We're going to cut flat irons. We're going to do some chuck eyes and etc. So come on back here. I can, you want to just keep rolling? I can just keep rolling. You're going to keep rolling because I'm rolling on emails. I can just got a big PO I got to put in. I can keep rolling. <laughs> I'll just yeah. keep the knife in the holster. We wouldn't want this thing to get hot. Be cutting through this like butter. Just keep this hot up here. I'd hate for him Between to get his ears. apron dirty today. All right, so you've seen us break down these chucks before, but you've never seen us break down one that's been dry aged this long. I can tell you, this is gonna work my forearms for sure. Everything's just a whole lot drier. I always try to, because I know I'm mic'd up, and I always try not to start breathing heavy into the mic so annoying i watch our videos back i'm like why was i breathing so heavy but it's it's a lot of work physically just pulling the stuff apart
and everything is just going to be more challenging because it's been aged so long once we get this started and some of this fat we will save to add into um, some dry aged burgers so not all of this fat will get discarded That's intense. Ah. But we're getting her. So we get that big fat cap off the top. Now we can go in and we can pull this flat iron out of here. So we want to take our knife and just follow right along that blade bone right there. Make a cut. And then just get a nice pull. And there you have that whole top blade portion, that flat iron. I'll get that all trimmed out in a second. Now we want to pull the mock tender off of here. Pull the shoulder blade out. Everything is just so dry. All right, so there's the shoulder blade. Get that pulled out. Now we want to prep this to get those, get that chuck roll out of there so we can cut some chuck eyes. Pull this chuck roll out of here. We're going to cut some chuck eye steaks with, out of this. Chuck roll. Start by getting that yellow cord out of there. The patty whack. Once we get this started, we should be able to just pull it out. This whole process is just so much different than cutting beef that's only been aged two weeks. Okay, now let's just prep this for some steaks. Using our 10 inch Victorinox we're just going to start by cutting some of this discoloration off the end and then we'll just get right into cutting our chuck eye steaks. And I'm thinking we'll just go down through this whole chuck roll 
and just cut this whole section into 42 day dry aged chuck eye steaks. Boy, look at those beauties. I find it pretty incredible that once you get that outer section off, what's left on the inside, it's just so bright cherry red, full of color, and you know it's gonna be amazing on the grill. On to this Denver steak. You just wanna follow the tops of these rib bones. Sometimes we'll cut this into a nice thick beef short rib. You can either do that or you can cut Denver's, a Denver. So today I'm gonna to cut a Denver steak because with that marbling in there, I wanted to cut a steak. So just start by trimming this up. Now here we wanna take this edge off. You don't want to leave you don't want to leave that in the package for somebody so you want that nice cherry red look. Now we'll just go down through and trim this outer layer off. This part right here wasn't exposed to the air, so it's not discolored or anything, but there is some, some gristle and some connective tissue, so we just want to get that off there. We typically just leave this as a whole piece. And there's your 42-day dry aged beef Denver. On to that beef flat iron. It's the last piece in that chuck to trim up. These flat irons are typically kind of difficult to do regardless, let alone age this long, but we'll just work our way down through it. Slow, smooth, and smooth as fast. And get this gristle off of here. Boy, it that is some pretty marbling for just your grain-fed beef. That's marbled up really nice. So after we get that top layer off, we want to go back here. We want to trim this layer off. Now that you have the gristle off both sides, you're left with that whole top blade portion. You want to go in the middle and take that gristle strip out of the center. You know, stay nice and tight to that gristle strip right there. And just go all the way through like that. Just a little bit more to trim off. There's one piece, and that beautiful Spencer. Oh, that's amazing! For not even being wall you. I know. Now we just fillet this out, sort of like a fish. Get the rest of this gristle off of here. I think the biggest thing while I'm cutting this is I'm just not used to it being, everything being this dry. It's definitely a lot drier than what beef normally would be that we're cutting, which makes it just a little bit more difficult to fabricate. So there we go. Take a little bit of this discoloration off from that dry aging. That's, that was that exterior, so that was right near where the air was hitting it. So 
we'll just take that off. And then I do want to let you know or remind you that um, through this process, you know, this portion right here will get discarded, this, this, you know, this outer layer, this blackened portion, um, but everything else will get saved and we'll make some dry aged burgers. Okay, so we're gonna get three flat irons out of this chunk. And then we'll get, we're gonna get four out of this chunk. So look at that. So there you have the whole chuck, flat irons, Denver, chuck eyes. Let's get them added to our table. Everything's cut. I do need to, however, make some more room on my table. So we're just gonna get everything layered up here. We ran out of space. Okay, now we can just get everything else added. So let's get these beef chuck eyes over here. And now we can get our Denver and our flat irons. It's time for a little overview. That was fun. Um, obviously that chuck was pretty difficult just because everything was so dry. But um, starting at the front of our table, we have those grain-fed beef strip steaks. We have those grain-fed beef T-bones. We have the grain-fed beef porterhouse. We have the chuck eyes. We have the Tajima Wagyu T-bone steaks, which Spencer and I kind of have our eye on. We have a beautiful beef Denver, and then we have the flat irons. All dry aged to 42 days. And Spencer, I think what we're gonna do is this one right here. Maybe we'll do... Um, one Tajima, one something else. How about a flat iron? Great, flat great, iron great idea. So let's it's do. Not tajimi. It's a, it's a, it's a wagyu tajimi. Everybody's wanting us to say wagyu tajima. The only video. Thing I gotta correct you is how you say tajima. Go ahead. Tajima. Tajima. I've been practicing. <laughs> tajima. I was at home. I, I think I heard, heard a Google up, and I was like tajima. I think okay. I heard a tajimi in there. Wagyu. Tajimi. Everybody's wanting us to say Wagyu Tajima. So we're gonna do the Wagyu Tajima. <laughs> no, I can't even say <laughs> it. We're gonna do the flat irons, and I think we should add um, a chuck steak to this stash. Ooh, I like it. So all 42 day aged. We're gonna cook these up, we're gonna sample them. Um, next stop, we'll see you at the grill. Meat and spices have gone together for centuries, and for over a decade, the Bearded Butchers have been formulating, blending spices that we started out using in our butcher shop, and now we've offered them for sale. 11 different unique blends and two sauces. We sell it in both shaker size and in large four pound bag sizes. We know that these spices are gonna be great for not just meats, but for anything that you can think to put them around, on around your household. So please go to www.beardofbutchers.com, check out our offerings. We're also into many of your retailers nationwide, so look for the Beard of Butcher Blend spices on a store shelf near you. Why'd you stop? <laughs> Ooh. Ow! Oh, 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 that was hard. Did you get that on camera? <laughs> Missed it. That was really hard. That probably hurt so much. Which one are you most excited for? I think we know the answer, but. Um, well, a little spoiler alert. We uh, treated ourselves to one of those already. So it was amazing. I think the flat iron might, I don't know, I don't know, that marbling in the strip, stuff to say, Spencer, I'm sure they're all going to be really good, but 
Probably the flat iron's probably my go-to, I'd say. The Brio's lit. You can see we have the stakes out here on our cutting board. Tajima, 42-day dry aged T-bone. Then we have chuck eye steak and two flat irons. We're going to put a little bit of brock and black seasoning on our board. We're not going to pre-season the steaks before we put them on the Brio, though, because we want the true taste of the 42-day aged um, steak. So that's the seasoning for the steaks. And then we have some potatoes in our 10-inch uh, skillet. Those are going to be going on the Brio as well, just as a side. And we're going to season those up with our brand new ranch seasoning. Howdy. <laughs> Taking a little break from our filming, mom and dad just rolled by to say hi. The brio's lit. We're gonna get some steaks cooked. We have the Tajima. So when we put this section in our in our dry ager, it was a porterhouse section. Um, we do realize that this steak right here is off the very end, so technically this would be a T-bone, but this is that porterhouse from that porterhouse section that. Um, you saw us process. So we have the Tajima, we have a chuck eye steak, this is grain fed, and then we have the two grain fed flat irons. We're not gonna pre-season these before they go on the grill. We're just gonna make some little piles of the Brock and Black and do some dipping after they're cooked. And then we're gonna do a side of potatoes in our 10 inch skillet. Um, we're gonna season those up with a ranch seasoning. Potatoes are going on the Brio first. We're gonna get them softened up, nice and crispy. And then we're going to um, put the steaks on. Brand new ranch seasoning. This stuff is absolutely fantastic on just about everything. We've been enjoying it on veggies and chicken and french fries and pizza. You name it. It's just, it's so good. You can see all the greens in there, those chives and herbs and has a little bit of organic Parmesan cheese. And it's just, it's so, so good. A little bit of butter in the bottom of the skillet, but uh, first order of business. Let's get, get these on the Brio. So I do want to cover these with a little bit of foil as they're cooking. And then partway through the process, I'll just remove the foil and we'll get some nice sizzle action. But that's gonna keep that heat contained inside that skillet. And it's just gonna help them cook a little bit faster. finished so we're going to start with the tajima put that right on the grate and then we're going to go right beside it with the chuck eye steak the green fed chuck eye steak and then a couple flat irons and we're going to get these cooked up and we get to sample them going to move our steaks around a little bit because our fire is hotter on this side of the grate so I want to get this Tajima steak over here get that over the hot fire we're just going to try to plant it so everything comes off around the same time if I can tell these flat irons are cooking a lot, a lot quicker steaks are almost finished we thought it would be pretty nice to have some melted cheese on the top of our, our, our potatoes. I'm gonna get this cheese melted and we'll get ready to eat. Steaks are coming off. 
starting with that Tajima. We're just going to let them rest here for a minute. Grain fed Chuck Eye. Grain fed flat iron. So those are going to rest. We're going to let the cheese melt on our potatoes. We're going to slice them up. Scott's got the potatoes. Ooh, baby. Look at that. Mm. You ready to eat? I am starved. We're ready to slice these up. We're going to use Montana Knife Company's Super Cub with that orange blade. That's a beauty. I think what we're gonna do, which one should I start with, Scott? Um, the Tajima? Yeah, that, that sounds. Okay. I'm just gonna start with this. I'm gonna follow that bone. That little piece of that filet off of there. I have no doubt this is going to be amazing. The knife just glides right through there. Look at that. Wow. That's all I could do to not just throw that one down the hatch. So this is the strip side of what would have been that porterhouse. Just remember that it was further down on the loin, so technically you could call it a T-bone, but it's from that porterhouse section that we put in the dry ager. So there's that. That little piece of that filet that was on there. Now we're going to do the grain fed chuck eye steak. I can tell that this is um, a little bit tougher, which we were expecting than the more tough than the Tajima, but Especially the chuck side mm -hmm. versus the eye side. Let's get, keep these nice and separate there. Now onto the flat eye. Look at that. Gorgeous. So these were just your grain fed flat irons, and we, we dry aged that whole chuck section, if you remember from the video. Wow. Look at those dandies. All right, Scott. I feel like I'm going to I think I'm going to start this end and work my way this way. Sure. This is the I mean, just just take a peek at that. Wow. Incredible. That's a, that's a big that's a chomp. So remember, no seasoning. We'll dip it second bite of each thing. Maybe we'll dip in the seasoning a little bit, but grain fed flat iron dry aged 42 days. Mm. Oh. That big beef flavor. Tastes like beef. But but it's got like such a the dry age. Yeah, it's it's got such a richness to it. I'm like getting a smooth buttery richness to it. I'm getting hit with uh, the nutty, caramely flavor. So this is the chuck eye. It's just like grain fed. You go to a steak house and you get like mm. the best thing that they have on the menu. And that's just plain beef too. There's no seasoning at all. And and that chuck eye, that's as good as any strip steak you'd ever eat, or or a ribeye steak. Great way to enhance a economy steak. Now here's here's what we've been looking forward to. That Tajima. Tajimi. Alright, I'm just gonna do this. Spencer. Oh man. For I'm not me? even gonna take the bite. Wow. You're, gonna, you're gonna take the bite. I'm I'm honored. Mm. That is pure, mm. buttery, velvety, smooth. Mm. Delicious goodness. I'm actually that's gonna cut, melting your mouth, isn't it? I'm gonna cut some of that fillet down so that way everybody can get some. You got my fork? I do. Thanks. <laughs> oh, get a wow. bite of that. Oh, leave some of that fat on there. That'll 
Mm. So something that I haven't done yet is I want to take a piece of this flat iron. I'm going to go in just a little bit of the black seasoning, a little bit of the brock. Mm. I'm going to hit the two of my favorite I'm going combos. I'm going to hit the, the trifecta. I got ranch, brock, and black on there. Oh. That's amazing. Only one thing left to try. Potatoes. And that's a potato. Hopefully these things these are aren't, gonna be lava. Aren't lava hot. Nice cheesy melted cheese potato seasoned up with the ranch seasoning. Hmm. That's an American meal right there. Steak and potatoes. We're from the Midwest. Oh. And that right there is a, a meal fit for a king and a queen. You must be the queen and I'm the king. <laughs> sure. That is so, Man, so those potatoes delicious. are good. I'm going to do it again for you. Oh, right. another one. You're going to be huffing and puffing on that because oh, it's a little warm. Was it hot? It's warm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Isn't that ranch seasoning delicious, mm -hmm. though? Man. That's super good. I I thought we ate some really good things on camera and we do. I mean it's just it just keeps getting better and better or I forget from episode to episode but the enjoyment that you get out of this is just spectacular. Mm. So something that we wanted to do was not season anything but it's like a I told these guys when we were cooking that it's almost like a sin cooking a steak without seasoning but um I feel like you almost have to to get that you get that real you know flavor from that 42 age 42 day age steak I would just point out though that when we add when when we use our seasonings they don't overpower the flavor of the beef no. It just enhances it, and that's one of the things about our seasonings that the reason why we developed our blends was they complement and enhance meat, especially everything, but meat especially. So when we season stuff, a lot of times people will be like, oh, you ruined it, whatever. No, we didn't. We just took it to another level, and I think that's what sets our seasonings apart, and we do that through you know, carefully blending them and then just top quality ingredients so that way there's no fillers sugar um just really makes meat better so so this wasn't really a comparison video between each cut um we just wanted to try them all because they all went into the dryer at the same time we just happened to have the different uh cuts available to grill and eat um but it's a friday almost lunchtime, um and how what better way to end a, a week days or a, a, a week of work than like this? Cooking on the Brio, out here in front of our log cabin, eating some steak and potatoes. Um, phenomenal products that came out of the dry ager. We're impressed. We've got some people to feed. It's lunchtime at White Feather Meat, so uh, time to wrap this one up. Absolutely. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. Some more content from the Beard of Butchers. Another way that we feel like we enhanced the art of butchery and uh, dry aging, hands down, been around for centuries. There's no better way to eat meat than dry age, hands Thank down. You. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Don't be shy and go visit our website. Don't forget some Beard Butcher Blend seasonings. They'll enhance any meal that you eat. See you next time.